but he's come in from uh, Texas, and um, we're going to hear uh, from our consultant and uh, an outstanding producer director. I don't know if you know that Chris holds the world's record. He holds the world's record. Why don't we show them with the what he did, and then he can explain what the world's record is as you view what's happening. Chris, come on up over here, and then you can take the mic, and uh, we're going to show you a world's record. And here he goes. That's the Rio Grande. You just swam across the Rio Grande River. What do you want? Oh, why? I don't want nothing. I'm Chris Berger, damn it. You're a funny guy, Tom. How did taste? Pretty bad. Uh, actually, the, the, the cameraman said afterwards, you just swam the Rio Grande twice in a cowboy hat, and uh, you should probably call your wife Lisa. So. So I did, and went and got my phone, and I called my wife, Lisa. And I call her Lisa, because that's her name. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> thank you. And she said, why did you swim the Rio Grande? And I said, well, you know, exactly, because you could. And you know, if not me, then who? If not now, then when? So um, I swam the Rio Grande to make a point about, about our country. Um, as, as Sam pointed out, as President Reagan said, if you don't have secure borders, you don't have a nation. That nation will not long survive. And as we've seen throughout Europe, you erase the borders, you erase the nation state. And it's happening here now. And a lot of that is because in any war, you have your troops, you have your munitions, you have your battle strategies, and then you have your PSYOPs division, your propaganda. And in this country, we have the mainstream media, we have fake news. Um, I just want to share with you some things I've experienced in the, my 17 years on and off the border. The, uh, the first time you pull a dead body off the border, you're looking at him and you're thinking, who was this person? You know, what drove him to come here? What were his last hours like when he died? Did he leave a family? And the biggest thing you're thinking is, don't get any of that fluid on your shoes because it smells so bad. If it does, you got to throw your boots away. That's something you don't see on fake news, is, is the smell of death that comes from the border. The first time you sit with a rape victim, a woman that thought she was coming to a better life, and the cartel coyotes have raped her. Um, they're just broken. The first woman I sat with, <clears throat> it was 75, 80 degrees out. She was in a winter coat, and she was just shaking so bad. She just couldn't stop shaking. She'd been left alone for three days. Second one I sat, sat with, girls probably about 16, 17 years old, and the cartel coyote who raped her was a snot-nosed kid that just grinned at me because he knew nothing was gonna happen to him. It wasn't, we waited for Border Patrol, Border Patrol came, he was held overnight, sent back, went back, took another load over next day. He gets 1,200 bucks a load, and that's a lot of money when you're a kid coming from Mexico. But you don't hear about those stories on the news. You don't hear about the rape trees. Anybody here heard about rape trees on the border? Okay, a few. So what a rape tree is, is when these groups come across, what the cartel coyotes will do to impress upon their load that they are the dominant authority bringing them across the border, is they'll, they'll take a woman, a daughter, a wife, often with family members in the group, and they'll have these trees, and uh, they'll put down sometimes blankets, sometimes just soft sand, and they'll rape them with the near shot of their families. And then to prove that they did that, they'll take their panties and their bras and they'll hang them up in the tree. And uh, when we first came across those back in 2005, the media did everything they could to destroy us that we'd made that up. UCI, uh, uh, ACLU came in against us, um, Southern Poverty Law Center. Uh, they couldn't cover up the truth. You can't keep the truth down. You ask any rancher down on the border, Texas, Arizona, yes, sir. They'll tell you they have these on the ranch. My buddy John Lance got them. You don't hear this in the fake news. They don't tell you these stories. Um, as, as it was mentioned earlier, you, when we're losing in some cities and states more people to fentanyl and heroin overdoses than we are car accidents, that fentanyl and that heroin, that's just not coming because the cartels want to diversify. That's coming from China. That is being put into our, our country as part of asymmetrical warfare against the United States of America. National security begins on the border. And those of us 
that have been on the border for years have known this. You talk to three letter guys down there, you talk to local sheriffs. You know, we've had, I, I met John Guandolo when we had jihadis coming in West Texas in the Bush administration. And the local sheriffs all knew it, local sheriffs, Texas uh, Rangers, we all got together and protected this one ranch because these jihadis had come across the border, Sinaloa cartel brought them across. And down on the border, it's, it's, not, a, it's not a brown and white issue. It's, it's, it's a, you have families on both sides of the border. And when this woman, this rancher, reported that the jihadis were being brought across the border, Sinaloa cartel went to her sister in Chihuahua and said, you tell your sister to shut the F up, we're gonna cut her head off and, and take it back in, into Chihuahua. So we protected that woman. That story never made it into the mainstream media. Just as in that same, that, that same county, small county, Hudspeth County, when the Mexican military was escorting the cartel loads of drugs into Hudspeth County, they were facing off in shootout wars with, with Texas law enforcement. But you didn't see that on CNN. You didn't see that in the mainstream media because they're not telling the true stories. During the Obama administration, my buddies and, and their ranches were seeing groups of Chinese come through, but the Border Patrol agents weren't allowed to talk about it. I'm filming down there, and they're under gag orders, not allowed to talk about it. We can only talk about the uh, people coming from the top five um, levels in the population of interest, and we can't talk to you about anything from China. But at the same time, on my buddy's ranch, they've got, they were seeing Chinese folks come through there with very advanced navigational um, equipment and what they were doing is they were mapping through the Vickers Ranch how to get in the United States of America, how to get around the border patrol checkpoints. And while the Obama administration was saying to us that wasn't happening, they were also putting rescue stations in these big pastures in South Texas, where you go to these. There's a there's a tower there and there's there's water. So you come there, you're thirsty, you're dying of thirst. Press the button, you get water, but also then it alerts border patrol, and it says that press the button and you'll get help. And it says in 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 Spanish, it says it in English, and then it says it in Mandarin. So when the Obama administration is saying we don't have a problem with people breaking into the country from communist China, they're still spending a lot of money to put up these high-tech rescue towers in South Texas. That's reality versus what's reported. It's, it's a war down there. My friends Mike and Linda Vickers, they have to carry guns to go water their stock, and they're not alone down there. Linda goes out one day, and her, her, her dog, Gretchen, her German Shepherd, comes back and drops a ball at her foot like she wants her to throw it and play with her. It's not a ball. It's a human skull. Oh, this is 73 miles north of the border in Falfurious, Texas. This is still going on today, and you weren't told about this. You hear about the cages, as Tom said, that were built under Obama. And you hear about separating families. Well, let's talk about separating families, because I've tracked children that the cartels have brought through the deserts of Arizona. And we've caught some of these groups. And back in the day, you catch them, you think you save them. But before Mr. Homan came in, before Mr. Trump came in with DNA testing, they would release these kids to just anybody. So they come up and say, uh, I'm Jose's uncle, and they would release the children. And those kids were, the ones we thought we saved are probably all dead now because they were being sold by the cartels for human trafficking and to uh, into some very, very bad and evil places. Those kids are, you think you save them and you don't. And that's still going on. You want to talk about separating families, let's talk about the cartels that are selling children in the United States of America. That's going on. I'm telling you, this is war. What can we do? Everybody in here can be a part of this battle because knowledge is power. And right now we are engaged in the greatest information war that this planet has ever seen. For 17 years, I've been telling you the truth about the border. For 30 some years, Mr. Holman has been standing up and being a warrior for this country and the media has ignored it. Well, just because we now have Joe Biden in the White House doesn't mean we can't stop them. This is absolutely winnable. We get to a tipping point of about 80% where people know the facts, they won't stand for this. Because the reality is, we live in a world where now conspiracy theories are the next spoiler alert. So if I told you, oh, the Chinese Communist Party is putting heroin through the border to try to kill Americans, you'd think I'm crazy. No. Tom, how much, how much have your guys caught? Enough fentanyl to kill every American two, three times over? 50 times. Yeah. That is reality. The reality is we have a president right now 
that will fly illegal aliens to new lives anywhere in the United States of America, but he won't send a plane to send Americans back from Afghanistan. Y'all can change that. Thank you for being a part of this and uh, ask God to give us some prayers and hope we get this one right. Thank you, Chris. <clears throat> Uh, before we bring up our special guest, um, you know, every, everyone in here is a unique individual. We thank you from the bottom of our hearts for being here. Many of you know about our organization, the United West and Jexit. Some of you are new. Um, we're basically committed people to uh, the, the, the four objectives for the United West. Defend the Constitution, defend the State of Israel, defeat Mohammed, defeat Marx. Pretty simple. 